Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna talk about osmosis. Now, what I've drawn up here is similar to the diffusion video. I've got a container which has some water. I've got a sugar cube, which we said is made up of solutes. And this water is the solvent. But what I've changed here is I've put in a membrane or a barrier between one side, which we'll call side A, and another side, which we'll call side B. Now this membrane is a semi-permeable membrane, which means it will only let certain things through. In actual fact, this membrane has the exact same qualities as that of the cell, which means it will not let anything through that is large or charged. Okay, so what we've got is a sugar, mold, uh, sugar cube. We drop the sugar cube in on this side of the membrane, and because we know diffusion, the high concentration of solutes of the sugar cube will diffuse throughout the solution until it is evenly distributed. Now, what you're gonna find is, as it does this and diffuses on side A of this container, we've now got a side that is really high in concentration and a side that is quite low in concentration. Now, this semi-permeable membrane does not let through these sugar molecules, okay? They're too large. And so, even though, because of diffusion, these solutes, they want to move across to the side, which is side B, until it's evenly distributed, they cannot. Now, in biology, we hate this. Biology hates the fact that there's two sides of a membrane that is unequal in concentration. It will always try and balance out the concentration. Now, when you look at this and think, well, how can I possibly balance out the concentration between A and B? A has a higher concentration than B. I can't move those solutes over from A to B to even out the concentration. What could I do? Well, you can move the solvent. If I were to move the solvent from side B to side A, what that means is the volume of solvent on side A starts to reduce and the volume of solvent, sorry, on side B starts to reduce and the volume on side A starts to increase. Now what's going to happen is side B will become more concentrated, side A will become less concentrated and it will become evenly concentrated amongst the two compartments. This process in which water moved from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration, or you could even say this movement of water from the area of low solute concentration to the area of high solute concentration through a semi-permeable membrane is called osmosis. So I'll say that definition again. Osmosis is the movement of water from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration through a semi-permeable membrane or you could say osmosis is the movement of water from an area of low solute concentration to an area of high solute concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. Now, why is this concept important physiologically? Well, when we have a look at a cell again, I have drew this up when we looked at the diffusion video. I said to you that in diffusion, we've got a high concentration of sodium ions outside the cell and they want to diffuse into the cell to balance out their concentration. You can also see vice versa, we've got huge amounts of potassium ions inside the cell. They want to diffuse out to balance out their concentration. Now, we have channels in our cells for specific ions and if their lids are open, then they allow for this diffusion to occur and that's called facilitated diffusion. But in this scenario, the lids of the particular channels are closed. Now let's just say you were to introduce even more sodium outside this cell. The way you could do this is through a drip. You could put high amounts of sodium into the venous system and what you'll find is sodium starts to accumulate. Now, when you've got this unequal concentration of stuff outside the cell compared to inside the cell, what happens? If the solutes can't move, what moves? Water moves. And remember, water is going to move from its area of high water concentration to its area of low water concentration, or it's going to move from its area of low solute concentration to its area of high solute concentration. So if I were to increase the amount of sodium outside the cell, compared to inside the cell, it's unequal. And water will want to rush out of the cell. It's doing this to balance out the concentration. This is the best way to think of it. 
when there's, two, when there's a membrane separating two sides, water will move to the side that has the most stuff dissolved in it. It will move to the side that has the most solutes. This is important because physiologically, for example, when if you are lactose intolerant and you were to in, basically take in some milk, has huge amounts of lactose, which is a disaccharide, a sugar, and if you don't have the enzyme lactase to break it down, that sugar stays in your bowel. High concentration of stuff. Water gets pulled towards it. So think about the solutes like a tug of war. Which side has the most solutes? The side with the most is gonna pull the water towards it. And so in this scenario, in the bowel, we've got a high amount of solutes that pulls water towards it, and this water moves through your bowel, comes out the other end, that's diarrhea. This is the diarrhea associated with lactose intolerance. This is osmosis.